Do it first. Do it yourself. And keep on doing it. You are now listening to Sorel Gorgor MD. Okay, guys, how to read any radiology study guaranteed. So let me tell you guys about a problem I had in residency. I show up to a rotation. I'd pull up a study that I wasn't familiar with, like an MRI of the brain with contrast, and I'd sit there and I'd wonder, how the heck do I read this thing? How do I deal with this problem that's directly in front of me? And in my second year of residency, I came up with a method on how to read any radiology study guaranteed. And it works. So without further ado, here it is, my secret method to read any radiology study. Anatomy, technique, pathology, and search pattern. Now let me say it again. Anatomy, technique, pathology, and search pattern. If you know these four things about a radiology study, you'll be able to interpret that study, and then over time, you'll become an expert in that study. And this goes all the way from chest x-rays, all the way to an MRI abdomen with contrast, with 30 sequences, including diffusions. All right, so how does this thing work? All right, so anatomy. You need to know the anatomy, period. All right, if you don't know the brain anatomy, you have no business opening up a brain MRI. You know the slice thickness is three millimeters. So pretty much if you don't know the brain structures down to three millimeters, do not even bother opening up that study. No, you haven't done your homework, and you know it, and there's no easy way around this. Now, there are a couple ways to do this. There's the easy way and the hard way. All right? The hard way is to open up a radiology atlas. Um, these are really hard to read. You have structures. You have uh, a word and then a line going towards the structure. And it's really hard to follow that line. And it's really hard to memorize those books. Um, here's an easy way. Best way is just go to YouTube, uh, type in in the search box exactly what you're looking for. So for example, type in brain anatomy, right? find some decent videos, watch them at double X speed, uh, and then rinse and repeat. All right, keep doing this for, you know, the knee, the shoulder, the neck, et cetera, whatever you're trying to read. Figure out that anatomy, get it in your brain. All right? Once you got it in your brain, you can open up the study and start to recognize things and you're on your way to interpretation. So that's step one, know the anatomy. Step two is technique. Okay, this takes time. Radiology is hard, all right? But basically we have four types of imaging studies. We have CT, MRI, ultrasound, and plain film. So start today, start learning these four techniques. I mean, if I had to choose, I would choose MRI to go first, actually. Start investing in learning these techniques, okay? It's gonna pay dividends over your entire lifetime because those techniques are really not gonna change, okay? If you know how these images are created, you're gonna know what the images can and can't show you what type of disease processes that they can actually show you. Right, so for example, if you know that a CT is really a density study, it's really a density map in 3D space, if you know that, then you know that a CT can be really good at showing you acute hemorrhage. Okay? If you know that MRI is based on hydrogen protons and shows you tissue contrast, then you know that an MRI can show you that subtle ACL tear or that subtle disc protrusion. All right? And if you know about specialized MRI sequences like diffusion, then you know exactly what you need to know to diagnose strokes. Next is pathology, okay? Pathology means really, what are we looking for, okay? It means thinking like a clinician, all right? So for example, first study I ever read, chest x-ray, same four basic things that I'm looking for in every chest x-ray, airspace disease, pleural disease, vascular congestion, and pneumothorax, all right? If you train yourself to find the diagnoses that the clinicians are interested in, you can really provide high quality reports without mentioning all that extra noise that drags down patients and physicians. All right, learn the top five diagnoses you need to make on every type of study, be it a CT of the head or a CT of the abdomen or et cetera. All right, train yourself to find those diagnoses, appendicitis, diverticulitis, renal obstruction, bowel obstruction, abscess. Okay, put yourself in the clinician's shoes and think about what do they need to know. Lastly is search pattern, okay? This is where it all comes together. The search pattern is a succinct methodology meant to tie in all the previous elements into one grand sequence, okay? Steal a search pattern from someone you know, add and subtract things that you find interesting, and then use the same search pattern every time, okay? After a while of using it over and over again, it becomes part of your brain, all right? I even put my search pattern right into the dictation template, okay? Because when I'm reading cases for several hours, I get tired, okay? All I have to do to remind myself what I'm looking for is look over at the dictation template, and it... it primes me on what I'm supposed to be looking for. Right, develop good habits on how to read cases. Uh, be open to suggestions. Learn from your mistakes. Keep writing and rewriting your search patterns until they're bulletproof. All right. So that's it, guys. That is how to read any radiology study guaranteed. 
I'm going to go ahead and work on my search patterns myself, get them perfected. I'll catch you guys later. Take care.